This is a very short presentation that covers the idea of relative position. Relative position is used in the rules to determine how skaters score points or how an illegal action is strong enough to warrant a penalty. Relative position is one of those items that may be confusing at first, then seems easy. But after you have that aha moment, there are a couple things that have been added that aren't quite so straightforward. Before we begin, however, I'd like to give you some fair warning. This presentation is not the official word from the WFTDA or MRDA. I am a level 4 referee with the WFTDA, but I am not working for them, and this has no official approval from them. I'm just a guy who wants to help out. And like anything that doesn't come with a WFTDA or MRDA seal of approval, take with an appropriate level of salt. In an effort to keep this presentation as correct as possible, I'm including the date that this presentation was recorded. In the event that I need to update the presentation due to something that was clarified or just out and out wrong, this date will change and there will be an update in the change log that's listed with the presentation on refed.com. This presentation was recorded on June 28, 2014. It was updated on January 10, 2017 for the 2017 WFTDA rules release. At its most basic, relative position means how skaters line up compared to their opponents. In this example, think of each blocker as having a position number, like if you were in a race. The blocker furthest in front, the one in first place, has position 1. The second place has position 2, and so on. The purple blocker is currently behind all four yellow blockers in position 5. If the purple blocker wanted to take a position away from the corresponding yellow blocker, she would have to pass, knock down, or send out of bounds that blocker. If she passes the blocker's hips, then she would suddenly be number 4 and the blocker she passed would be number five. We've now effected a change in relative position. There are a few other ways to change relative position as well. One is by knocking the opponent down, and the other is by knocking the opponent out of bounds. In each of these two cases, the position of the opponent has changed to zero, as being down or out of play has no position. This is also why destroying the pack is a penalty. It causes all blockers to have no position. You can also gain position if a player falls or exits the track of her own volition, or if a skater is called on a penalty. So, when reading the rules in casebook, when a section says a skater gained or lost position, this is what they're referring to. Simple, right? Good. Before I end this presentation, I want to go into two other short topics that are related. The first is no packs. As I mentioned earlier, during a no pack, skaters have no position relative to each other, except that the rules state that you still cannot cut the track. There's more going on during a no pack, of course, than the skaters having no position. Uh, while they're not allowed to engage each other, they must also immediately reform that pack. But even though there's no official position to jump when re-entering from out of bounds, they're still not allowed to cut. So if it helps, let's break it down this way. For purposes of out-of-play calls, they have no position. But for purposes of cutting calls, they do have position. I won't go into details of the cutting rule in this module, but it's worth noting that the exception that still has the cutting apply during no packs does not apply to skaters who are out of play when there is a pack. The second thing I wanted to touch on briefly is the concept of established position. Most of the time established position comes into play during the time before a jam starts, when players are trying to get into position and possibly to take someone else's position. You could almost say that in these situations that someone has laid claim to their space on the track. They're stationary, or in the case of a jam in progress they may be skating forward but aren't making any changes in speed or direction and will remain in that place unless either they decide to move or because someone forces them to move. This isn't jostling. Jostling isn't going to affect anyone's positions. Knocking them down or taking their space does, as does moving them out of bounds, including straddling the line, 
or putting someone over the jammer or pivot lines. The hard part about this call is that frequently people come in hard for their favorite position before a jam starts and knock into someone else before either has established their position. In those situations, there is nothing to call unless the physical impact was enough that it forced the receiver of the block down, out of bounds, or out of their established position. I hope this explains a bit about what relative position is. It's a very simple concept and hopefully simple to understand, but plays a huge part in how we officiate the game. I'd like to thank the Vienna Roller Derby for their permission to use their Ultimate Roller Derby Ubiquitous Magnet Board for this presentation. It can be found at viennarollerderby.org slash urdumb. I'd also like to thank the following photographers who gave me permission to use their photos, Pre-Flash Gordon and Adam R. Martini. If you found this presentation helpful, and I hope you did, please share it, but be sure not to modify it and give the appropriate credit for its presentation. This presentation is licensed under the Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives 4.0 International License.